Kraken Home Ice is sponsored by Primera Blue Cross. Always in your corner. The Seattle Kraken round out their short trip at the pond tonight in Anaheim. Look back to Terry in the high slot. Big save by Joey Decord. Monty, what a job there. Was that Tolvanen in that ends up jumping in the air? Tonight, the Seattle Kraken host the Anaheim Ducks. Tolvanen and a goal because of that hit by The Seattle Kraken and the San Jose Sharks. The rebound scores! Shane Wright in the right place at the right time. Wide open, they score! That's hockey, baby! Shane Wright on the weak side, a beautiful play. The Seattle Kraken and the San Jose Sharks. Vince Dunn, after 19 games, returns from injury. Twenberg, he'll take it to the slot, shoot one stop, the big rebound, and Decord recovers. Schwartz scores! Jaden Schwartz snaps it home. There's nothing like celebrating a holiday week with a pair of split road trips. After back-to-back -back games with the Ducks and again with the Sharks, the Kraken get a little break now before heading east for a road trip that starts Tuesday night against Carolina. Welcome to Kraken Home Ice. Just ahead, we're talking to head coach Dan Bilesma about the team's busy travel schedule. Kraken broadcaster Eddie Olchek is a hockey great, but also has expertise on the racetrack. And speaking of the track, goalie Joey Decord is a big Formula One fan. He tells us about his love for F1 and how he's giving back to his college. But first, it was quite the week of travel for the Kraken. The Kraken had to rally to get a win in Anaheim. On Monday against the Ducks, Shane Wright got Seattle on the board with his game-tying goal in the first period. The Kraken didn't score again until the third, and they came out firing. Jared McCann backhands the puck, and Andre Burakovsky battles until the puck slides into the goal to tie the game at 2-2. Just 24 seconds later, they get another one. This time, it's Monty. Brandon Montour fires home the slap shot to make it 3-2. Watch Ellie Tolvanen actually jump when he's in front of Montour to make sure the puck gets through. The Kraken take home a 3-2 win in their first game against the Ducks. Then Wednesday was time for game two in Seattle. Joey Decor gave up two goals in the first, but the Kraken get on the board in the final minutes of the period. With 3.30 left, Ellie Tolvanen scores a gorgeous goal, his sixth of the season. The Kraken get another one in the second. Oliver Bjorkstrand cashes in to tie the game at 2-2. That was the final goal for the Kraken. The Ducks scored three more to beat Seattle 5-2. After back-to-back -back games against the Ducks, the Kraken were off to San Jose for game one against the Sharks. Friday, the Kraken got their struggling power play going, scoring two goals with the man advantage. Friday was also a two-goal game for Shane Wright. The two teams combined for 13 goals in this one. The Sharks pulled away in the third and beat the Kraken 8-5. Head coach Dan Bilesma has been impressed with the team's ability to bounce back so far this season, especially with the busy travel schedule. Where he'd like to see his team improve is the power play. Uh, the mindset has to be appropriate when you step on the ice to, to turn it around. It's a game-to-game -game thing, the power play is. It's a key to every game, both the power play and the penalty kill. And the mindset uh, has to be you're stepping over the boards to score a goal. Here's McCann with a shot, he scores! And, uh, you know, that can improve from our group. I think, uh, you know, from game to game, we've, uh, we've had some good power plays against Nashville um, where we step over the boards and we get three or four scoring chances that first power play. That's the way the power play needs to be every opportunity. I think it's uh, also you've seen where you get multiple uh, power plays within a game and the power play uh, kind of derails a little bit I'll say uh, with mindset as the power plays go on and gets frustrated and gets uh, gets off kilter a little bit and uh, the mindset's got to be readjusted and the mindset is set is game to game it's not about where our power play has been in the past it's not about where it's going to be in the future it's about stepping over the board with the mindset you're going to score a goal each and every time. Center one, Schwartz scores! Just coming off a back-to-back uh, -back against the Ducks and the Sharks where it's here, there, here, there. Um, kind of a, 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 
a rapid fire trip compared to these five game trips you're about to go on where you go east coast and do a longer trip. Um, do you prefer one or the other? I prefer the, if you call them one offs, so or you call the two game road trip to LA and then Anaheim are more traditional road trips that uh, most NHL teams have where you, you know, it's, um, it's a, a much different mindset than packing for two weeks and packing for five games and packing for four or five different cities. Um, that's a, a long haul kind of uh, vacation type of practice mindset where you get the game in LA, you get the next game in Anaheim, it's really quick hitters. I, I don't want to say they're easier to play on the road, but I think the guys are more are comfortable with those, the, those types of road trips, those situations. And, um, you know, the, the five gamer can be uh, more of a, a daunting slog where you have to bear down and, and uh, be under siege for five games and, and that can be a daunting thing. Finally, taking me back to um, maybe your childhood when it comes to Thanksgiving traditions. And, you know, when we were younger, we were always have a football game or two on that day and you're plenty of friends around. Was there a tradition that you enjoyed when you were younger? Church, coming home from church, uh, football was always a part of it. Um, Detroit Lions fan, Thursday, Thanksgiving football is always uh, seemed to have the Lions, Bears, Lions, Packers, Lions, Dallas as a Thursday, Thursday game. So um, along with the big family meal, there was football in the backyard and uh, the Lions on TV and, and then uh, a massive family gathering of uh, my brothers and sisters and, and my grandparents and my mom and dad and, and just uh, the big old fashioned Thanksgiving dinner followed by uh, tryptophan and, <laughs> and big old lion, <laughs> the lions on TV. And I don't know what made me sleep more, the, the lions on TV or, or the food. <laughs> All right, thanks coach. Back to the point, Montour scores! The goal of the week goes to Brandon Montour for his game winner against the Ducks on Monday. The goal started with Shane Wright winning the faceoff. Montour rips the shot as Ellie Tolvanen jumps up to clear the way. The puck finds the back of the net for Monty's seventh goal of the season. Goalie Joey Decord has been having a great start to the season. We'll talk to him about what's been working for him so far. Each and every day trying to come to the rink with the, the same mentality and trying to get 1% better every single day. Coming up on Cracking Home Ice, we'll hear from Eddie Olchek. Known for his successful hockey and broadcasting career, Edzo is also known around the racetrack, especially when it comes to horses. You guys giving your A game today or what? Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna snipe you guys. Oh good save! Don't put that puck in your net! We don't like goals! <laughs> Just like you asked for. Sean, you tired, bro? What's going on? <laughs> you look comfy down there. What cars do I own? Uh, I got a Jeep Wrangler right now. You know what Jeep Wrangler is? <laughs> oh, rebound! Oh! <laughs> Joey Decord having some fun with the next generation of goalies. It's nothing like getting a few tips from one of the Kraken's very own. We talked to Joey about his love for Formula One racing and what inspired him to start Dax House, a partnership with his alma mater, Arizona State. Put back to Terry in the high slot. Big save by Joey Decord. Joey Decord is dedicated to the deep. The Kraken goalie has had some big time saves this season. With his 10-5-1 record, Decord is ranked 11th in the league with a 2.46 goals against average. Try to be as consistent as possible with my preparation, my routines, my practice habits, and um, you know each and every day trying to come to the rink with the, the same mentality and um, trying to get 1% better every single day. That's uh, it's just a constant um, you know grind to keep trying to find ways to improve. Lee in front, look out. Decord! 
crowd says no on Sasikas. Joey graduated from Arizona State University and made history as the first Sun Devil to play in the NHL. His time at ASU meant a lot to him, and in return, Joey started Dak's House. The foundation is a collaboration with the Sun Devil Club to help connect kids battling cancer to hockey. Through Dak's House, kids and their families get to sit in a suite and watch a Sun Devils game. That's something that's uh, really special to me. My, uh, my grandma passed away from uh, pancreatic cancer, and um, I want to do something that was giving back to the community where I went to college, and it's something that, that meant a lot to me, and uh, I thought that, that was a perfect way to match uh, you know, giving back to the ASU community and also doing something awesome for kids and growing the game of hockey. It, it's kind of just like a perfect combination of all things together. As skilled as he is between the pipes, Joey is also quite savvy when it comes to Formula One racing. He has his own series called F1 with Joey Decord. Last race was in Brazil, and we had one of the craziest races I think I've ever seen. I had a, a friend of mine, actually um, a, a goalie friend of mine from Germany, who was big into Formula One and a big Lewis Hamilton fan. And he's like, oh, we got to watch the F1 race. And I was like, what's, what's F1, you know? And so he got me into it. That's how I picked Lewis Hamilton to be my favorite driver, because he just told me to cheer for him, so I did. And then I got really into it, and now here we are. Thanks for coming back for uh, F1 with Joey Decord. To get in the zone on game day, a crucial part of Joey's routine is locking in with an episode of The Office. Before his first shutout of the season against the Predators, Joey watched the negotiation. The episode where Daryl asks for a raise for Michael, and then Michael's like, dude, I can't give you that raise. That's more than I make. And then Daryl makes fun of him. So then he goes to, he goes to New York to negotiate it a new salary with Jan and it's just yeah it's just a hilarious episode and uh, just keeps you like keeps you fun and puts me in a good mood on game day. Coming up on Cracking Home Ice we're talking to hockey great Eddie Olchek about his friendship and special bond with fellow Kraken broadcaster John Forsley. There's great humility with how we call the game and we take great pride in trying to be the best but also to entertain. Assist of the Week is sponsored by Primera Blue Cross, always in your corner. The Assist of the Week goes to Ellie Tolvanen for his assist to Oliver Bjorkstrand in Friday's game against the Sharks. Tolvanen gets the pass from Shane Wright, then taps it to Bjorkstrand, who finds the back of the net for his fifth goal of the season. Kraken broadcaster Eddie Olchek's knowledge and passion for the game of hockey sets him above the rest. Combine him with the talents of John Forslund and JT Brown, and you have a broadcast dream team. Eddie's career as a player and broadcaster has been very successful. But did you know he got his on-air start in horse racing? Brianna Vasquez talked to Eddie about his road to joining the Kraken. And I made a big uh, career decision at, uh, you know, at 56 years old that uh, you know, I left an unbelievable job in my hometown in Chicago, and you know, sometimes things just develop, and you know, the opportunity presented itself, and uh, you know, knowing my brother was here, and Nick was already on board, and my son had been here for a couple of years scouting, and don't get that opportunity to, you know, really get a chance to be around your family when you're, you know, when you're working and stuff. So, I mean, it's, I think it's, it's great. It's uh, very appreciative for the opportunity. Family was important, but so was knowing who he'd be joining in the broadcast booth. You know, that was certainly an important part of the decision for me to come here after year one. But I will say this, Bree, is that, you know, I've known JT since he was a teenager playing with my oldest son, Eddie, um, when they were playing juniors in Waterloo, Iowa. So I've known JT for a long time and followed his career. You know, and also Johnny, you know, Johnny being here. That to me was like, okay, you know, like I, I can see myself, um, you know, wanting to be a part of the broadcast. and and obviously in the family part of it. So yeah, there were a lot of, a lot of factors that went in, not only personally, but professionally to, to get this great opportunity. I'm very thankful for the organization to trust me and allow me to, to sit in that chair. They found ways to get back in the game. Eddie credits the success in the booth to the leader, John Forslund. Johnny is our captain, and our broadcasts are what they are because of him. There, there is nobody better that calls the game in the game of hockey than John. Now Larson out to center. McCann knocked down at the line. I've had the opportunity to sit next to him on a national level and then get a chance to, to be a part of, be his partner along with JT um, for our Kraken Hockey Network. I think we could do the games with our eyes closed and 
we could read off each other and people would never know. I think there's great humility with how we call the game and we take great pride in trying to be the best, but also to entertain. Boy, I'll tell you what, take a look at this, Edzo, JT. Yeah, now, first off, if I had to eat with chopsticks like that, I'd be there for two weeks. I like to think that our broadcast is honest. Yeah, we want the crack in the win. And if they're playing well, we're going to play that trumpet. Fantastic team effort. That's cracking hockey, baby. But when it's not going well, I think that if you ask anybody is that, you know, we're, we're going to say, I'm not going to belabor it, but you're not going to fool the fans. They know when it's going well, and they're going to know when it is well. So I think knowing that Johnny was here, I was like, OK, like this. You know, we, we, we feel we can be the best and we try to be the best every night. So for me, it's, it was a, it was a win-win and um, extremely pleased with, with where we are and, and still striving to be better. A lot of people say is that when a goaltender's mask comes off of the game, it's an automatic whistle. That is not the case. Eddie's broadcast career actually started not with hockey, but with horse racing. I actually got my start in television, believe it or not, at the racetrack, uh, Cliff Notes version, 94, I was a member of the New York Rangers. We won the Stanley Cup. The next year, we had a work stoppage. So there was no hockey until the following January. So the people at the Meadowlands Racetrack, you know, East Rutherford, New Jersey, and they were big Ranger fans, they were like, hey, you know, you like the horses. We love the Rangers. You're not working. Why don't you come work at the racetrack and, uh, you know, you can pick horses and handicap and, you know, just promote the game. and." You know, where we'll pay you to come to the racetrack. I'm like, wow, this is a win-win. They're going to pay me to go to the racetrack. And I actually got my start in television for the first time was doing horse racing in, in, 90, in the fall of 94. Fast forward, I got the job with NBC as a lead analyst for hockey. They had Kentucky Derby and the Breeders' Cup for a long time. I asked my boss for six years about being a part of the broadcast team for horse racing. After giving me the Heisman for six years, he said, let me think about it. So I got a shot. I started working horse racing in 2014. I knocked it out of the park my first two shows. And then I got the opportunity to work my first Kentucky Derby in 2015. And oh, by the way, American Pharaoh won the, uh, the Triple Crown that year, our first Triple Crown since the early 70s. So that's how I got it. It's been my passion. It's always been my release to get away from hockey over the years. and. Uh, I just love being a part of it, and uh, uh, it's just a just a great a great thrill to be at uh, you know one of those uh, marquee events on NBC uh, each and every uh, first Saturday in May. I'm loving what I'm doing, and that's something that uh, I take great pride in, and, and hopefully learning something as well along the way. Whether you like to dabble in horses like I do, or you're you know trying to learn something about the game of hockey. For more of Eddie's interview with Brianna, go to King 5 Plus. Coming up on Kraken Home Ice, there's lots to appreciate this holiday season. We talk to the Kraken about what they're thankful for. Kraken fans, send us photos of you at games or sporting your favorite Kraken gear. Text your Slapshot Snapshot to 206-448-4545 and you could see it featured on next week's show. Well, I'm thankful for you too, for all of you. Still, we're going to the apple cannon. I know how low we're supposed to go. Probably like this. That low. Right. Yay! Come on, Demi. Oh, you're not coming? Right. You're gonna leave me? Hey! <laughs> yeah, you going to maze? You're gonna be the maze leader? Yeah. Okay. But Dad, it's a race. Man, he's slow. Hey, you can't follow me? Yes, I'm following you. You're, you're the leader. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a maze! I won! I don't know if I'm gonna make it, actually, you know. Taking forever. Okay, this is it. This is it. Cheater. Cheated. You skipped all of them and I skipped one. Ah! Wait, 
Dad, if you were a pumpkin, you would look like this weird one. What? Let me see it. Don't run away, I want to <laughs> see it. That one. <laughs> oh, this is 10 out of 10. As the year wraps up and people are recovering from their Thanksgiving food comas, there's a lot of reflecting. In this week's shootout, we asked members of the Kraken what they're most thankful for. Yeah, I'm thankful uh, to the Kraken for giving me this opportunity. Thankful um, to the fans for supporting us and myself. Uh, it's truly incredible to be here and then always thankful for my family and my friends. I have an incredible support system and uh, grateful to have them in my life and support me every single day. Oh, family, friends, my teammates, um, everybody. Um, um, there's, there's so many things we can be thankful for. Um, just appreciate like every day. Joy of life is being uh, thankful and grateful for what you have and, and the blessings you have in your life. And that's, you know, for me, family and my son and just the, the blessings that the opportunities we have in life and to coach in the National Hockey League, to coach the Seattle Crack. And it's, I don't know if you could ask for anything more to be grateful for. We're in the team store at the Kraken Iceplex, and there's a lot of cool stuff in here, right, Bowie? Whether you're shopping for yourself or a loved one, there's great Black Friday deals. From now until Tuesday, you can select Bowie merch at 32% off, 75% off select drinkware, and you can get authentic home and away Adidas jerseys for 100 bucks. These deals are in effect in stores and online until Tuesday, December 2nd. Chances are you need new ornaments. This year, the Kraken and the One Roof Foundation have partnered with Glass Eye Studio, founded in 1978 in Pike Place Market. The studio has created three unique Kraken-themed ornaments. There's a hand-blown red and blue glass ball, a goalie mask, and a hockey stick. You can buy these ornaments at any Seattle hockey team store. And speaking of getting ready for Christmas, if you want to gift someone the chance to see a game in person, the Kraken have you covered with special ticket offers. Each holiday ticket pack comes with two tickets to three upcoming games and two pairs of holiday-themed Kraken socks. Some of the games included are January 20th against the Buffalo Sabres and February 6th against the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Kraken are on the road for the rest of the week, but there's still a lot going on at Climate Pledge Arena. Tomorrow, Cindy Lauper brings her Girls Just Want to Have Fun farewell tour to Seattle. On Wednesday, Seattle University men's basketball takes on Portland State. Thursday and Friday, Billie Eilish is performing. And on Saturday, it's the battle in Seattle. Gonzaga hosts Kentucky. Great college basketball matchup there. As for the Kraken, they head out on an East Coast road trip that starts in Carolina Tuesday night. Then it's up to the New York area to take on the Islanders, the Devils, and the Rangers. And that'll do it for this episode of Kraken Home Ice. You can catch us every Saturday night at 1030 on Kong or 1135 Sunday nights on King. Thanks for looking in. We'll see you next week. Crack and Home Ice is sponsored by Primera Blue Cross.